Hey guys, welcome to the High School E-League. It's your boy Jackson Prot Williams, your color caster today, joined by Ewan Iatos Reed, who will be your play-by-play -play caster. Introduce yourself, brother. Hello, everybody. So this is the this is week one of the High Sports Esports League, and of course we are covering Western Australia today. So it's gonna be very exciting to see you know what Western Australia's got to offer us. Mm, indeed, and these two teams are actually like looking pretty uh, decent. We've seen a bit of banter back and forth in the chat. But on the red team, we will have Joseph Banks SZ Zuckerbergs. And on the blue team, we will have Applecross SHS, SHS Team B. So obviously, uh, can we, if we can get some hype in the chat for these teams, they've gone through a lot of effort to organize themselves and uh, just um, practice up and get ready for these first rounds. And before we get into all this, I'd like to make a big thank you to all the teachers, students, parents, even the tournament organizers who have been able to get all this together and make this massive event possible. So massive shout out to you guys right now. You're doing a wonderful job so far. This is the first week and I cannot wait for what, another 12 weeks of this? It's an 11 week tournament. So we've got uh, I believe another 10 weeks to go, in, not including this week. So we've got plenty of League of Legends acts. And then there are so many teams that came in from Western Australia for this particular event. I'm looking through the list now and there's, I'd say easily the better part of 20 different teams, mostly from each in like, each school putting up one team so so many schools so many teachers being you know promoting this esports approach which is fantastic to see oh indeed and it's like as as we are currently just waiting on what's going to happen to this but from what i've seen of some of the other uh some of the other teams today it's been uh some of the matches have been one-sided some of them have been very competitive so we're getting quite a mix in these earlier weeks of um of uh different skill levels and as the weeks go on we'll start to see different skill levels grouping up together so it's going to be closer and closer games as we get to the end of the tournament definitely and i was discussing with mr encryption in our previous matchup you know the discussion of do you go for what is considered meta or what or would you aim more to getting a lot more comfort picks with your champions and encryption mr encryption was saying about for especially in the first couple of weeks play to your comfort play to what you know more than what you consider is meta so do you think we'll be seeing that again in this particular series? Mm, indeed. Well, so a lot of the, and especially with the new patch that's just dropped. So ADCs have completely changed this entire landscape. Such a bot lane dominant meta has now become God knows what, because you have got different AD items, different crit items. So many different items have just come in and been taken out. So it depends on like whether you go for split push kind of things, or you go for these AD assassin mids, which might come back into it. But well, we are currently getting into the pick and ban. So Lucian, Zaya, and Ari looks like we're going for these playmakers right now. Exactly. You were talking. You were talking just a bit before about you know AD carries. This patch has changed them quite significantly, and we're seeing two AD carries taken away for the Zuckerbergs. They do not want to deal with that. So are we thinking to themselves? Well, that means you know Apple Cross is going to be a very AD centric team with you know, focusing around the spot lane. If we see, if we look at these bans. And also, another thing to note is Hail of Blades has just come out in the new patch. So what that is, is it's basically the opposite of Lethal Temple. Whereas Lethal Temple gives you a massive bo boost of attack speed um, later, as the longer the fight goes. Hail of Blades, the first three attacks, like a massive eight attack speed boost. So champions like Master Yi would be able to like, get that Gwinsu's Rage Blade up and procced. Uh, you have, do have the Lucian being able to get those early auto attacks for those short trades. Um... And even Olaf, who would be able to utilize it, I'm not sure how he would go, wh whether he would choose that over something else, but he has been taken off the table. And Indeed. right right now, first thing, off meta pick, comfort pick, Kale from Venata67. Indeed, and I love to see this. I like seeing comfort picks for champions. They may not be meta. They may not be, when you look at the you know professional level, they're not going to be the champions that these pros are playing. But you, like, you know, these players are not on the level. They're not OCS players. They're not you know, OPL players. They are, you know, they're high school um, players who are really you know, aiming to win this tournament. So I'd say pick for what you're good at rather than, you know, what some high diamond challenger player says, you know, the strongest thing right now. Pick to what you are good at. Exactly. And you just got to look, you, you learn how you play, you learn, you, and then you go from there. So we do see, oh, one thing I did notice going into this is that some of these accounts are quite low level accounts on um, Joseph Banks, I believe. So the Zuckerbergs. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can actually get the summoner spells right or if, because it does look like we're hovering a, a heal ghost right now. And this could be quite drastic if this goes through. I mean, I, I like to think they were quite low level accounts, but I think these players are at least 
there may be newer players to the game. There may be newer players saying, hey, let's give it a go. The school wants to have a little bit. And just coming in for a little bit of fun. And honestly, while, of course, this is a tournament that you do want to win, there is nothing saying that you can't have a little bit of fun while you're diving through it. Indeed. Like, uh, it's it's oh, a good a good example of, like, uh, any kind of team is unless you're at the highest professional level and you're getting paid for it, at the end of the day, you're just a team of friends. You're primarily friends. You're secondarily a team that wants to win. So your priority should always be, like, to have fun, to have a blast, to want to do this again. But back yeah. into this, we have the Kaisa, the Rakan picks. Kaisa, amazing ADC still, apparently after the uh, item changes, because of the on-hit builds that come out. And then the Rakan, amazing playmaking potential there. So such a scary thought. Exactly, and we moved on to the second fan phase, and we're seeing Nas is taken away from the top side. Now, Nas is, of course, if you give Nas his spare time, if you don't know how to brutally punish a Nas in laning phase, he is going to get those stacks, and he's going to single-handedly smack your team down. So it's not really a huge surprise to see someone who can scale insanely into the late game removed off the table. The same with Tristana. Mm. And also, we do have the Zed coming in. So, uh, I believe the new item is Storm Razor. If you haven't hit anyone for a while, Storm Razor gives you a massive boost on that first hit. So, it's good in champions like Gangplank, uh, Zed, Talon, a lot of your 80 champions, which have like an amazing auto attack. So, this Zed might just be able to, like, Zed, which has often been seen as a bit of a bit of a questionable pick in uh, pro play, might just come back into any kind of professional meta simply because of the items like Storm Razor that have come in. So, it's going to be an amazing to see. Indeed, unfortunately, we're not going to be allowed to see Zed today. Pro, they have, you know, Apple Cross are not allowing that, but we are going to get a Fizz coming in on the side of the Zuckerbergs and a Draven as well. Oh this team knows God. how to party. So we either have a Kale support or a Malphite support, probably a Warwick jungle, Draven ADC, and a Fizz mid. Whereas on the uh, on the red side, we do have the uh, Sed Juani jungle, a Kaisa and Rakan bot lane. What looks to be a poppy top lane, which I have not seen for about a year and a half, my friend. Ooh, and a Morgana locked in, and if this becomes Morgana, Morgana mid, mid, I really this... like this into a Fizz, because if you max your Tormented Soil, Fizz isn't getting near you. Exactly, and look at this thing. You have got so much lockdown, so much peel, and you've got a hyper carry in the Kai'Sa. This Kai'Sa is going to be able to decimate as long as you protect that carry with so much peel and so much uh shielding from the rakan and the morgana you might just be able to do that but maybe uh someone like a uh, soraka might have been better than the rakan to be able to get more healing or a jana being able to get that much more healing and shielding but still this is quite a dangerous team comp in a protect the carry sense definitely it's a protect the carry comp we were talking about ad carries and we see three ad carry men. the zuckerbergs they sort of knew this was going to happen they got rid of zaya they got rid of lucian they got rid of tristana three guys who, admittedly, not so much with the Lucian, but with the Zaya and the Tristana scale insanely well, but Kaiser did slip through the cracks, unfortunately, and I do agree, like, they've got a tank frontline, they've got Rakan for protection, they've got Sejuani for lockdown, and then Morgana, if you do get on top of the Kaiser to protect us, so this feels very much like Applecross is putting all of their eggs in the wolf basket with this Kaiser. So, it does appear that the... Am I, am I seeing that it might be a client bug? I'm not completely sure. But Erethin has gone for the ghost heal. Yes, that he might has. be a client bug or that might be an actual fact. For the bot lane, they've got a double heal bot lane no matter what because everyone but the jungler has taken heal. And we have four flashes, whereas you do have the more standard kind of summoner spells on the side of um, Applecross. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, whether it might be some amazing strategy from um the zuckerbergs or it might be uh, a bit of a, a bit of nerves coming out from them but we'll we'll, we'll definitely see I, I like this idea from the zuckerbergs i think more than anything they're trying a lot of teams will only pick what they're they're comfortable playing you know in matchups because like oh i don't feel comfortable in this match i'm not too sure about this one in this case zuckerbergs are saying hey we may not be exactly comfortable we're not exactly you know we don't the meta is like this and we don't fully want to follow it. We want to try our own style. And I respect that from the Zuckerbergs. They're not following the meta. They're saying to themselves, well, let's give our style a go. Let's give what we like a go. And then if that doesn't work, then we have 10 weeks to adapt our style to how other teams are playing. So I really like this as the first week, just being like, let's give it a shot. Let's see how it goes. 
Yep, but also if we look at it, that is an amazing engage comp with the Malphite, Warwick, and Fizz. You have the Fizz ultimate with the Fizz dive in, the Malphite with that unstoppable force, the Warwick with the infinite duress. There's so much engage coming out of them, as well as the Kale. Like someone goes in there, they're going to be invincible for two to three seconds. Whereas, I, I'm not sure about the interaction, but look at this Poppy. Very good pick to kind of like block the Warwick and the Fizz going, uh, the Warwick going in, sorry. But I'm pretty sure the Fizz can get around the Poppy uh, shield, the W. And also the Malphite's Unstoppable Force, I don't think is stopped by Poppy's W either. No, I, I believe Step Off Presence is very good against a lot of engaged styles, but you, I do believe you are correct with the way that, yes, it's, the, the ability's name is Unstoppable Force. I'd be very surprised if an Unstoppable Force gets stopped by a Steadfast Presence. So we'll have yeah. to see how those interactions go as we get later in those team fights. Well, maybe Poppy's um, skill might be changed to immovable objects, so you never know, man. You never know. I, ha I haven't checked out Poppy's uh, skill names in a while, so I'm certain, I'm certain that's exactly what it is. And did, right, did, just... you, did you read the patch notes? It's like, under Poppy, name changed. <laughs> name changed to immovable object. But we are just about to load into game, ladies and gentlemen, because, of course, we do have the uh, unfortunate moment of a three-minute spectator delay. But... We will be going in soon, and we can see this in an ugly. I have faith in the Zuckerberg. I like their champion pick. They've got a Draven. They've got a Fizz. If they can get ahead, I have confidence in them to be able to take control of the game and simply blow Apple Cross out the water. Okay, so you're you're a Draven. Uh, you're a um, Zuck or Zuckerberg's fan. Well, unfortunately, I thought I'm gonna have to go for the Apple Cross team here. I I like their comp better. Um, a little bit more damage would would be preferable to me, but they still have what the makings of it. Morgana AP can still do a lot of damage. Poppy still does a lot of true damage to tanks. This Kais is going to scale like an absolute madman. And Sejuani, I love that champion in the jungle. I, it's, it's brought me to tears of these nerfs that have happened over the while, but she's still relevant. So, mm. and it's, and we actually look at, if we actually have a chance to look at these, uh, these uh, runes, do you have a Fizz with, a Fizz is running Comet, the Kale is running Comet. Warwick is running Electrocute. Malphite's running Electrocute. And Draven's running Press the Attack. Indeed. So these are not... I'd say I wouldn't use the word standard runes with these, but like I said earlier, I do like that they're giving something a good... They're giving something a little bit oddball, and they're giving it a shot. And, I mean, if they're able to get off Press the Attack onto Draven... Imagine if Press the Attack from Draven procs off onto Kaiser, And they all oh. pile onto the Kaiser. Exactly. That is a dead Kaiser, no matter what way you look at it. And that's the majority of your damage gone. So you got two electrocute procs. You got the the um, press the attack proc. That is no matter how much you don't have a lot of shielding and healing coming out because you only have the Morgana and the Rakan for the shielding and healing. And unfortunately, that isn't that isn't quite what you would want in a hyper carry kind of comp. So there is possible to get these electrocute procs, get these combat procs, and get that press the attack proc off onto the target that you want and this could definitely swing the game in their favor no matter what point because all it is is one major carry exactly um, that, that's the risk when you run one of these protect the carry compositions i mean they're not too difficult to to build in a in a terms of your pick band phase because all you have to do is pick one really good scaling carry a couple frontliners and a couple supports and you can sort of work your way around it but executing a protect the carry composition is a lot is a lot harder than you think about it in theory because it's a lot about coordinating. All right, I'm going to put my shield here. We're going to position here. If you get caught out of position, one person goes down, then another person goes down. Your team just starts to fall apart. Indeed. Now, look at these items that they've started off with. Now, this is very interesting. So, Rakan going Ancient Coin, that's pretty standard. You've got the Doran shield um, on the uh, on the Kaiser, sorry. But Draven's gone Doran's Blade, that's standard. And then the Kale support has gone a Doran's Ring. So, has opted to go for uh, more bulkiness um, a bit early and a bit more damage early, maybe? So yeah. it is, could be good for an all-in early uh, to try and get that advantage. And with the Comet, they can get that harass. So they're going to probably try and look to push this uh, advantage and then quickly back and maybe get a Spell Thieves or a support item source for that gold gen. Or maybe it just could be a really weird meta where it's a completely rotating map, which we haven't seen before. So these are the possibilities involved. Exactly. There's so many things they could do, and... I actually do quite like this idea of starting with a Doran's Ring because it gives you a lot of harass. It lets you, you know, your, the damage, you get more damage out of a Doran's Ring, I believe, than a Spell Thief. So it simply means in a lane where if Applecross want to contest bot lane, they always have to do a full all-in with the way that Rakan operates. I mean, he does have his battle dance to make him safe, but it's not 
once Rakan goes in, you can dish out major damage to him. So I feel like it's more of a we have we have a range advantage with um with with the way that um Kale can make her auto attacks range. So they're gonna try harass the lane with the Doran's ring and then simply work off that. Yeah, but one of the big issues of that is if you don't get an advantage early, you've practically lost the lane, then it's a longer to get those wards, it's a longer time to do things, and it's and already we're starting to see a, a bit of an issue because the Kale is actually not stepping forward, they're not pressing this advantage. Maybe they're trying to go for a kind of bait or something like that, or the Kale has started off with the heal, so I'm not exactly sure what the plan Ooh, but level is. Level 2's coming in for bot lane, and unfortunately, annoying gamer burns both his cooldowns, and unfortunately, it's not enough to keep him alive. Uh, what time frame are you on, my friend? I'm at 2.30... 2.40. Yep. Grand. Okay, I'm 2.42, 2.43. Warwick is being oh, collapsed on. Is... Oh, it has just got deleted. So that is two kills already at 2 minutes and 50 seconds, so this is not looking good so far. For your guys as Zuckerbergs. So, I do believe his name is Teniklis, by the way. Ten... Teniklis? It's... Ten... Teniklis. Ten... I love oh, names like this. They're always a little bit... A little bit uh, hard to hard to keep up with. That's the, that's the joy of casting games. And you know, like, you learn, to, you learn to love me. You're like, oh, these look like fun names. I know, right? So you have such interesting names. Like, people always come up with these cool names. Like, New Wiz. Um, Tentiklis. Venata67. Annoying Gamer. Arathen. I reckon I... The... Name there that just spills up the tongue nicest for me. Definitely the Venata 67. Oh, just... Ring Ringu is in quite a bit of trouble. I'm going to start calling him Ringu and Tenet. <laughs> Ten is just having a bit of a juke out, but I think Warwick might be able to win this, but it's unfortunately not a fair fight. This is rude. <laughs> one v one me, bro. No, no, no. It's three v one. My team's here to help. It's one v one me IRL, and next thing you know, it brings his homies in. And it's absolutely decimated. So Tenticlus now has had to back and he's got four extra parts. He's only cleared, he's only got six CS right now. So he's cleared a camp and a half. Um, and he's struggling hardcore. He's actually, he's a massive disadvantage around. So this is not looking good for Zuckerberg. Oh, Wolf is taking a little bit of damage here. And the bot lanes are trading it out. They are, oh, that's a lovely double knockup. Wolf not really fully dishing out the damage. Unfortunately, the heal comes out as well, but Knowing Gamer is in quite a bit of trouble. His health is super low. And one more hit coming in. Double flash. Woohoo! Applecross wanted to make sure he didn't get out alive. So right now we're seeing quite a skill difference in between these two teams. And one of the big issues that we're going to have as long as the game goes on is the fact that you do not have that gold gen item on the kill. You don't have that spell thieves or the ancient coin or even a even a relic shield. Um, so you don't have that gold gen. So Kale's going to go further and further behind unless they can get a lead. Um, you do not have the teleport advantage on the Malphite. Venatus. Sorry, I got excited there for a fight. <laughs> and it's, it's, so you are going to see a, 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 a bigger issue because this Draven is so far behind already. Zero two against a one zero two Kai'Sa. You've got a Warwick that's zero and two as well. The Poppy's got the lane pressure and the teleport advantage the entire game. And even though he's going to struggle with mana in this early lane phase because he started for a, with a Sheen, he's probably going to back and get that um, early Ash. He's probably going to back and get that Sheen, and then he's going to absolutely decimate in all these trades because of Spellblade. So, right now, it's not looking good for Zuckerbergs, but it's 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 going to be interesting to see if they can come back with this massive wombo combo pick potential onto the Kai'Sa as the game goes on. I mean, I'm still having faith in it as we see Tenacus is once again in quite a bit of trouble. He is really wants to fight this. He knows that in a 1v1 he can win, but unfortunately, he's just too far behind trying to force aggression where unfortunately he just can't be affording to. Mm. And especially like with the Sejuani. Sejuani is so beefy. And Warwick, Warwick is one of those champions that he's decent really early because he has so much dueling potential. Oh no, this is bullying at this point. This is four members down bot lane. That is... That felt personal. This is a kill a minute for my Apple Cross boys. And it does look like they are going to go for a six second here because they, they have pressure in every lane. And the only lane that's even close is currently the mid lane. And the Fizz there has only got Sorcerer's Boots and nothing else. So it does seem a bit one-sided now with a 4,000 gold advantage at six minutes. This is, this is absolute disaster, but... I don't know that Sejuani's looking a bit 
risky there with that health. She does get a little bit low, but she does have smite available and manages to keep herself safe. So she's not going to be executed by a by a minion just yet. But talking about the, the, the nature of the game is really, as like you were saying before, Zuckerbergs are falling behind quite a bit early with, you know, with Venetus being, you know, the saving lane. He's on even on CS to his opposite number, and he hasn't managed to die just yet, along with Nuiz. So they are holding on, but like we're seeing a tenant. I'm never going to be able to pronounce his name correctly. Tentiklus is constantly trying to be a bit aggressive onto uh, Raghu here, as we see taking his blue buff. Do you think this is the right idea? Like, he's trying to be aggressive and he is being punished for it. So do you think he should keep trying to be a bit more aggressive or should he try and dial it back a little? So one of the big issues with being aggressive is, firstly, you're behind. If you were equal with the Sejuani, you would win the 1v1. But the issue is you have not been equal with the Sejuani since the beginning of the game. And... Another thing that you have to look out for whenever you're playing aggressive is you've got to make sure that you that your lanes have pressure. So that means they can roam and help you without losing anything. So it gives you the initiative to be able to make those plays, to be able to get that pressure, basically to always have that oh, advantage in numbers. Ethanus, unfortunately, is going to get taken down and the exhaust comes through as well, ignoring Gamer. Forced to flash out. Now, Tempicus, he ignores your advice, but he goes right for the buff, and unfortunately, I don't know if he's going to be able to secure it. One more hit, and then just to live and gets the fear off that I don't know if he's going to be able to survive this. The flash comes through, but unfortunately, it does no damage. I was just curious. That that, that looked like a bit of a panic flash there right at the end. So, Tenticlus, good job for getting the red buff, but unfortunately, that was not worth your life, my friend. You do have an electrocute, but that is only good for, like, those short bursts of damage. Maybe a press the attack might have helped you there. But, unfortunately, this, uh... uh -oh. oh, no, new is That's the whole worst time to use your ultimate, unfortunately. Oh, he bars him, goes down. That is the first kill for the side of Zuckerberg. And he has flashes up. He might be able to get out of here alive. Rognu does have his flash up and available, but he's got no real cooldowns right now. Archic Assault is on cooldown. He's a few more flashes. The flash is into the tower, but it's not enough. And there's no way he manages to live. No, he managed to pick up the kill. But, and then execute for Rognu. He manages not to get hit by new is during all of that. Oh my, what? That is, I do not believe this. And even after all that, it looks like we are going for the AP Malphi. He has gone for the Sorcerer Boots immediately. So not only does he, he, he trades one for one, he does make the right choice there, but it's a bit questionable as to like where, where he's going from there. Like he might want to go for maybe more um, of a tanky build because his team does need that kind of tank initiator, but those Sorcerer Boots tell a different story to this. He's going, he's going for the AP Malphite. He's going to be tipping that death cap and being like, my lady, I'm going to one-shot you. So we'll have to see where that goes. But on a serious note, like we were talking before, Zuckerberg's accounts are relatively low level. And unfortunately, we are seeing a few poor decisions being made as we are proceeding through this game. But we've got to remember that these players are relatively new to the game. Like a lot of these players, I don't think have been playing for too long. And yet here they are in a high school tournament, you know, playing against players who have been playing for some time. You've got to give them at the very minimum the, the credit that I think they deserve. Being like, okay, we're not that experienced with the game. We're going against guys who look like they've been playing for a while, but we're still going to give it our damnness. Like, we've, you've got to respect players with that mentality. Like, I'll be honest, at their level, like, when I first started, I was nowhere near this guy. I didn't... Oh, no, this is... This one farm is jungle! Oh, my God. It's like... You tried to farm the enemy's jungle, that didn't work. You tried to farm your own jungle. You look, you don't have a jungle anymore, mate. You are donezo. This is now 11 kills to Apple Cross in 10 and a half minutes. This is disastrous. A six and a half thousand, or five and a half thousand gold lead. Doesn't look like they're going in though. And Dave, I don't know how much is going to go. The, the quickness comes out and unfortunately, the Fallen Angel no manages to survive herself with the intervention, but it is not enough, and Melogens picks himself up an Angel. And there we have, well, it's not an Angel anymore, it's the Fallen Angel, so when she comes back, she will come back as Morgana, if any of you lore nerds know, uh, know all the stories of um, League and the uh, lore. Speaking but of Morgana, she's doing a good job in this mid lane, Venus being a little bit aggressive on the Fallen Angel, and the Shark unfortunately does not connect. And of course, it's like, this is Australia, those sharks are dangerous, but basically uh -oh. they don't really... Oh man, it's not! <laughs> so, when chakra taps, attacks happen, you just gotta cull the population, you know? <laughs> oh my god, oh, Tentaclus! Tentaclus, this is your jungle, you need to be... Yeah, there we go, Tentaclus is defending his jungle, this is his land, Ragnar, you need to get out of there. 
This is all he wants. He just wants his jungle. But of course, oh my uh -oh. god, the Draven. Annoying Gamer is in a little bit of trouble here. The Akathian Rain does quite a bit of damage, and one more hit will do it. And Draven can't be pushed up that far with no doubt. Oh, this is one versus three. The Unstoppable Force isn't even available, so he's not able to dive out of there, and they will eventually defeat the Mountain. And. Once again, this is looking quite disastrous, but we do have a catalyst of the Eons oh. now coming up for the Malphite. There's more health and mana regen and sustain. So, they might be going for either the Abyssal Mask there or the Rod of Ages. So, depending on what kind of build. Oh, oh my. It's because, oh my. Look, that is so much damage coming out of Kaisa there with just a Rage Blade. 605 Kaisa at 12 and a half minutes. 17 to 1. Apple Cross, you are oh. decimating. Venus, Venus has managed to dodge that grand entrance. That's actually really good from him, but it's just it's really looking bad for the Zuckerbergs. They're losing their outer turrets bit by bit, and that's accumulating in what is nearly a 10k gold advantage for Applecross right now. Oh 100 percent man. This is absolute disaster. This is Oh the shark just come out, does get onto the priority target, but there's that black shield. You've got pretty much an AD carry with two supports guarding him. There's not really much you can do with just a Fizz who doesn't have a lot of damage. Exactly, Fizz is sitting on the Hextech Revolver. Oh no, this is horrible! Gets caught by the Dark Binding and then Grand Entrance into Quickness ensures that he falls down. Tennis uses the Infinite Dress on the tank, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And Kaiser claims herself a double kill and will even be picking up a triple kill down in that trade on the bot side. And as you were saying, Fizz was sitting on something. It looks like he was sitting on a Binding Knockup Charm. And uh, a trip back, a free trip back to the base. So, <laughs> oh no, Ethereus, he's just trying to get some CS. He uses that intervention, is whacking away, but Wolf has no mercy. He is a predator in his own right. Burns the heal, even along with the killer instinct, but it is not enough. And Kale falls for the fourth time this game. But look at the bright side. So, when the Draven or the Warwick die right now, they're actually not worth any gold. They're practically worth them out as much gold as like a melee minion or a caster minion. Like cannons are more valuable than them right now. So even though they keep on going for these, um, they, they continually go for these kills, it's not really going to increase this gold unless they start going for towers. But at the 12,000 gold lead at 14 minutes, I don't think you're worried about your gold lead. <laughs> exactly. But now it looks like they're rotating top side for tower. Anu is, he has no stop before and it's getting chain CC'd. Oh no, that's disastrous. Even burns the exhaust to make sure he has nowhere to go. And that was absolutely frightening to watch. This is a massive rock that was just wombo combo to oblivion. He has 700 gold on his back. There's not really much he can get there. He's probably saving up for that blasting one to try and finish that uh, run of ages. But <gasps> sorry, but it's it's looking quite disastrous right now was what they can do. This is going to be the third tower going down at 15 minutes. Exactly. And with all of the outer tier turrets down, as we all know, like, that opens up the map so much for Applecross. They can look at Rift Herald, they can start looking at more dragons, they can start looking at, you know, getting more picks um, the second that Zuckerberg's move out without proper warding. And then it, then it just might be in a little bit of trouble, unfortunately. He is very much in the position. That is who ultimates use to ensure that Fizz doesn't get away. Also, did you notice the rune change for um in the Sorcery Tree? The Nimbus. So one of the things that, I don't know if any of these guys are running it, but one of the things that um has changed with the new patch is instead of ultimate hat, which, oh wait, there's a full fight happening. Oh, it's a shooting one, the wolf isn't able to get him. He manages to pick up the Draven and Ethereal. Unfortunately, he does not have intervention up just yet. I don't think he's going to cool down for a couple more seconds. And, I mean, wolf is 12 and 0 without even getting two items yet. This, this is only going to get worse for the side of Zuckerberg's, unfortunately. And Wolf is, is sitting on a thousand gold, so that might just be the Essence Reaver there. So the change to Essence Reaver is it doesn't give you uh it doesn't give you any crit chance anymore. Oh he's caught metal on out of position is you can force your way down there. There's no support coming from him. You've got numbers advantage. Oh feed the waters feed the waters is up and available. Is he gonna toss the shark out? It doesn't look he uses the heal to keep on top of him, but and it just decides, you know what? I'm gonna let you live. You you deserve to live for that. Yeah, but that's that's the sad thing about this Warwick right now. This Warwick is so weak. It, he did his full combo onto the support, and it practically did nothing. Indeed. Oh, there we go. Chum of Waters goes down, and it burns through the shield thing coming out of the the, the, the Rakan. So there is quite a bit of damage coming out of it. And then there's... Whoa! He's gone really deep. And unfortunately, I think he is going to get taken out. The Void 
Oh, the void claims yet another. This, my friend, might just be a 20 minute game. Zuckerberg's like, you won our hearts with this very weird team comp but and team strategy, but I don't think, I think you might have a few things to work on, but this is always a good learning factor. Oh so no, you can't be backing there, Tenicus. Unfortunately, he will fall, but I, I'm gonna agree with you. This is, if nothing else, a learning experience. And like I said before, I give this team absolute credit to the fact that they are a new team to this game. They are entering, you know, a nationwide event and they are willing to go, yeah, we're probably going to have a bit of a rough day. But at the end of the day, we are willing to give it a damn good shot. As we see, Wu is, he's not even safe under his own turret. Okay. So, okay. Now, here's one thing that it's going to be very interesting. So, how? How would they come back with me? Like, if there is any possibility of them coming back, what would they have to start doing? Picks. Yeah, picks. So, they'd be relying on their Warwick, they'd be relying on their uh, Malphite, basically trying to get those electric group procs onto the Kai'Sa, probably. Yes? Yeah, because you were talking about earlier, they have a fantastic amount of crowd control. They've got, they've got infinite duress into unstoppable force. You can throw the Chum of Waters on top of that. If you can get two or three people in a confined area, you can absolutely delete them. But unfortunately, they're just getting caught out on the map, trying to push their luck, trying to push these waves, and... It's just really going unfortunate for the Zuckerbergs that they just keep getting caught out of position. And you know what I find really funny? So that's the wall. Like, the uh, the Poppy was able to, like, smash the uh, wall into that clear wall that wall we can go through but Poppy can't. So instead of just going through as the Poppy just decimates a massive rock guy, um, instead of just going through, he's actually knocked into the wall as if it's a solid object, even though it's only solid for the Poppy. That's, that's an interesting it. interaction. Of course, Poppy, we're, she does manage to connect that she does get a wall stun, so that's that's what we're aiming for. See, Venus, whoa, looks like it's a bit of a 2v2 here with Annoying Gamer on his Draven, but Benetaris is taking a lot of damage. That Tormented Soil absolutely chunks. You were talking about the fact that AP Morgana hurts, and oh, that took so much health off of Venetaris right there. And there's an AP Morgana that is now 4 oh. 5 after that. Oh my god, the damage! This it's... guy head first into a dark binding and just got melted. It's uh dark it's like dark binding is one of the most annoying abilities in the game. And now Wolf's gonna get reported for AFK. Exactly. Once you get hit by that binding, there is no moving, there is no fun when it comes to a Morgana, unfortunately. Um like, Unfortunately what, Zuckerberg are definitely feeling it as we're seeing Wolf in the other team's face, like, no no no, we got this. As we see Reptile falling at the same time as the middle inhibitor 1930 on the clock and Wiz this unfortunately is not your base anymore you see Wolf in quite a bit of trouble with that perfect KDA 20 0 and 5 Wolf is a one man army at this point Wolf is so s Wolf Wolfie SOSM I reckon like how I'm going to call him Wolfie Wolfie I think Wolf, Wolfism, Wolfism? Nah, no, it's easy to call him. No, 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 it's like... Oh, actually, no! <laughs> Come on, you can win! Alright, oh, I tried. Come on, Tentacles, Tentacles, Tentacles can't, you can take... Unfortunately, uh... Wolfie is just taking names left, right, and center. If this is a death note, then he is taking everybody out. That is a triple kill coming in for Wolfie, and even two more members coming in. Wolfie's coming in, using that unstoppable force. They're going for the car, but it's not enough. Another kill picked up for Wolfie, and that is going to be the fifth a penta kill coming in to round up the game. Well, I do have the idea. It could be Wolfie Soz. Me. Uh, I was thinking the game with Wolfie. It's it's a fun little name to have, but unfortunately, Wolfie has no mercy. Oh. A natural predator is picking himself up kills, even going them up on the fountain. And unfortunately, it does look like 26 and 0. 27 and 0. Annoying oh, game. Oh, 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 he goes. Shut down coming in on Wolfie. He is taking out so much of that perfect KDA. Annoying gamer has claimed his first kill of the game. And Poppy gets executed as the minions finally take it down. Oh, my God. And Wolfie, you had such a perfect game. But the, they don't. The, the Rift Tail dancing at the end. Did you see that? I love that yeah. one. Well, if you if you're able to end the game while Rift Herald is still alive, you um the Rift Herald will give you a little dance as a congratulations. And it's it's just oh that was that was a heartbreaking match to watch. It's uh, we do have the Zuckerbergs absolutely getting slaughtered in that game, but it's all it is is a lesson to learn. You can look at it and be like, oh okay cool, we lost this tournament. Guess what? You can win the next one. Or you can play again. You can do so much more. 
So it doesn't end there. It's always there's always room for improvement. There's always things you can watch, guys. You can like play solo queue. You can play games with friends. There's always more to learn. Always more to improve on. Sometimes the best way to learn is to lose. So exactly. therefore, you can go you know where your mistakes are, and you can improve. Exactly. Them. If you look at, uh, I believe it's in the EU LCS. Many coaches have stated very publicly that to lose is to open an avenue to improve because you can see your weaknesses. You can identify. Okay, we're weak here. We need to improve on this. And it's when you're winning, you still have these weaknesses, but they are a lot more concealed. So I think this is a good step for Zuckerberg. As we said, they are a newer team, they're a lot of new players. And the fact that I said before, they are willing to go headfirst into a tournament this big and be like, let's give it a go, let's give it a shot, has my uttermost respect for the fact that these players are willing to do this. Is I, like I said before, they have my utmost respect for, give, for you know, having the balls to give this a shot. Mm. Indeed, and right there, it's it's this game was an absolute one-sided game, but you can like learn so much from there. Um, things to take away from it, and if 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 the guys are listening, and it's like it's this is our is honest opinions. Things like uh, looking at like the fizz, like he's an he's an assassin. Running electrocute is usually optimal because you do have that burst. Um, with the supports, getting that support item, great goal gen. You can control that vision. Because your vision control was like lackluster. Like vision control on both sides was pretty poor, but it wasn't really needed because it's such a short game. And it's it's things like that, small things like that, where you can slowly improve on. And it's 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 always room to grow. Like it's Yatos and I have both been in the depths of like in the depths of like low when we first started. And it's it's at the end of the day, this is a game where we we connect with other people and we learn from other people and we have fun with other people. And that's that's how you grow. You don't just grow in game. You grow as a person when you do that. Exactly. So I, I really am looking forward to hopefully being able to cast this team or maybe Zuckerberg's one or two more times later on in the season because I want to see how they develop as a team. I want to see if they can create, you know, a team style. So hopefully we will be able to see that as the season progresses because, of course, remember, this is an 11-week tournament. Every week they're going to be playing. Um, so I'm going to be really excited to see, you know, the teams as they develop the styles because, of course, we do receive, you know, the information of how games go so we can take a look at games post games i know that myself mr encryption and some other casters will be looking at you know each and every game looking over this and we can start developing team styles we can start looking at you know the teams who you know some teams like this for zuckerbergs they're going to have a bit of a rough season but i have faith that if they put their if they you know put their head down they give it their all they will be able to cut they will be able to claw a couple games and take up a lead so uh, that's unfortunately it for the high school esports league uh, for tonight and so again a huge thank you to these schools and the teachers for you know helping their students come along helping these students you know for such a large tournament promoting it getting them ready getting them organized creating a team so of course we want to give a huge thank you to that uh, a huge thank you of course to uh, my fellow cast of pro for coming down you know and doing a very fun very informative cast as always mm. And thank you, Iatos, for casting both games today. What we will be doing in future is we will have four casters for the two different games that are played. But unfortunately, uh, one of our casters was unavailable. Um, and Iatos decided, yes, I'm going to step up. I'm going to do two games today. And when you do that, it's a bit of a commitment because you don't know whether these games are going to be hour-long marathons or short 20-minute ones. So thank you so much for your time today, Iatos. And once again, thank you to the teachers, the students, the organizers, even our great and mighty leader of casters, Yuna, who is uh, hiding away somewhere. She she knows where she is. Thank Indeed. you. <laughs> she's the one who has been hosting this event. Of course, she's the one that has been streaming it and ensuring that your viewing your viewing experience has been the best that it can be. So, of course, thank you for that. And as we do conclude, please, this is the last reminder that the High School Esports League is a part of Riot Games' High School League of Legends Australian and New Zealand Championship. So, if the teams do manage to climb their way up, you know, they are... They do have quite a bit, if they are doing their, their job, so they will have quite a bit to wear. So, unfortunately, that is going to be us for tonight. So, have a wonderful day, and hopefully we'll see you next week for week two of the High School Esports League. See you guys. Have fun.